Hello, James here. Um, just before you hear our wonderful review of Midsommar, um, I thought I'd better give you a little bit of information about the film because when we were talking about it, we didn't know. <laughs> so um, it's um, written and directed by Ari Aster and it stars Florence Pugh, Jack Carena, William Jackson Harper, Wilhelm Blomgren and Will Poulter. Um, and apologies if we get anything wrong, because we usually do. Enjoy. OK, welcome to the Movie Lighthouse Midsummer Special. My name's James. Yeah, I'm Laurie. All right, Laurie. Yeah, so I've, we... I've been allowed out. It's <laughs> a night shift. It is, this is unheard of. Yeah. So Where are we, James? We are in Leicester Square. Um, yeah. We've just been seeing the film Midsummer, directed by... Midsummer by... Uh, I'm going to go... Ali. Oh, God, we're Ali. bad. A, and his second name is A. Google it. Just is Google it, it guy, guys. Yeah, Google it. Is it the guy that did um, Hereditary? It's exactly that fellow. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. And this is his second film. Yeah. A film that he wasn't planning to make, I don't think. I think they gave him the original script and he was like, yeah, OK, it's all right, it's that pagany thing, but I want to do a lot more with it. Do you think he did a lot more with it, James? There was a lot in it. There was a lot in God, it. God, it was over like God. two and a half hours long. Yeah. Um... Apart from that... What did you reckon? Well, I wanted to like it, and I, I certainly... Do you know what? As soon as I realised it was the same as Guy did Hereditary, it followed a similar path for me. I oh. really liked the first half an hour. Right. I thought it opened brilliantly. Um, I thought it built good characterisation really well. And then they got to the village. Yeah. And then... Um, as you may know, I did a drama degree <laughs> and everything they did in that village, they've done in that in my drama degree. Yeah. From mir all the games, all the drama games were just turned into like weird yeah. shit. Yeah, because you, like, you're basically following these sort of dreamlike, it becomes very dreamlike quite quickly actually, this film. But when, you, when you're in the village, particularly so, you're definitely in a dream and you get these little tableaus, almost a little bit legal gentleman in a way, mm. behind in the background, you get like the. What sort of ceremonies were we doing? There was, there was a chopping of a wooden horse. There was a twisting of towels. There was strange dancing. And, you know, and then you're following the characters in the foreground and you're just following what they're kind of doing and walking through it all. Now, just talking about the characters, Will Poulter's in this film. Yes. Now, <laughs> I like him, but I don't particularly like him as an actor. Can you get over his face? Is no, that the that's problem? No, problem with the eyebrows. <laughs> however... He's got a very high-volumed face. However, I did imagine that if I was in that situation, I'd be a bit like him. Yeah, I think I would as well. And it, I think you can identify quite easily. And now, this film's polarised a lot of people, isn't it? They're like, a lot of right. people go, this is bollocks. And there's some people that actually quite like it. And I think I've got a sneaky suspicion that people that kind of like it and can tolerate the story as it goes through are people that can kind of identify to that situation because I think the people that would go, what the fuck? There's no way I would allow this. I'd be gone. I'd be gone the right first bill a second. Yeah. And those kind of people probably wouldn't like this film, but if you allow, if you're a little bit more open, there's a lot of stuff in this film which, personally, I feel kind of touches on the human psyche and what we allow to happen and what we don't allow and what we make sense of relationships or nature or whatever. And it's, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. We'll, we'll take this back to the lighthouse, I think, and we'll talk about it properly, but... I really enjoyed it. Well, you see, my issue is I really like cult. Cults. You know, I'm fascinated by cults. So, like, you know, the right. David Koresh cult and stuff right, like right. that. Um, obviously, Charles Manson and all the stuff he got up to. This felt so kind of shoehorned and, and so artificial and so silly. I'd, I'd, I thought... I just found it very hard to take it at all seriously. Yeah. Oh, nah. There's, there's comedy in it and daftness in it. No, but, but not when it's... Uh, I mean, it was all the way through for me, really. I don't think the cult thing is actually a serious thing. I think the cult is just sort of like a tool to sort of kind of us, I don't know, uh, trying to make sense of kind of how lonely we are and how we can kind of figure stuff out. Like I say, I can probably chew on this a little bit better in the lighthouse. Did M. Night Shella Lehman 
Shall I right, make a knacker No, because there's no major twists. No, but it's felt just like his sort of work. It's a kind of feel to it, I suppose. Can I say what I did like? Go on. All right, I did like the camera shots. Of <laughs> yeah. Cinematography. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it was it was a visual feast. Yes, but it was daft. Yeah, and they they do say like, oh, it's a horror film in bright sunlight, and that was actually one of the first things that struck me I when I saw the trailer. Was like, wow, bright sunlight, and apparently it's a horror. It's not a horror. However, it, I suppose it could be, I, you call a Wicker Man a horror, right? Yeah, I mean, but the Wicker Man was certainly, I felt, built a lot more tension than this. I don't know. Yeah, I Wicker just Man felt, was more basic. I Wicker... just felt, why didn't we just go and watch the Wicker Man again? Well, Wicker Man is more better. Well, first time I watched the Wicker Man, I was on Edward Wood's side, and it's like, these guys are fucking nutbags. And then the more you watch the Wicker Man, it's like, actually, maybe these guys have kind of got it figured out. And then that, that is a similar kind of thing that comes over into this film, because, all right, we're all off in our normal world with mobile phones and friendships and theses and education and blah 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 and that kind of stuff trying to figure out what life is but then these guys are kind of lock themselves away and <clears throat> kind of doing it differently i suppose and whereas the wicker man is a little bit more a simpler idea this one kind of touches into breaking down of relationships and making sense of life and death and making sense of i don't know just real you know, the basic bits of life, you know, shagging and shit like that. Oh, yeah, but oh, the, uh, without giving any spoilers, yeah. the, the end of Hereditary is it's very Hereditary? similar to... I haven't seen Hereditary. Oh, right, well, it's very similar to the end of this. He's got a fascination with old naked women, I think. Oh, right, OK. And mm-hmm. um, what did you think of um, Samuel L. Jackson's son? Oh, is that Samuel L. Jackson's son? Yeah. Oh, right, OK, because it was... He, uh, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he was good, he was good. Yeah, I liked him. I think the acting, what do you reckon? The acting was good, Oh, yeah, it? but I thought the acting was super Really fair. great. Um, I, and I thought the female lead was great. Yeah, we yeah. best wrap up. The Rosas are coming, man. Yeah, all right, then. So we'll take this back to the lighthouse. Have you got the boat keys? Uh, oh, shit. All right, well... Shit! Fuck that. Let's go and see another film. Yeah, let's do that. All right. <laughs>